Living Father, help us to receive help this dawn. It's your sins that stop you from receiving my help. By these dirty, filthy sins, we've planted disasters. May we be forgiven of them all. May we receive help. How wrongly have we lived? We should be living as instruments of righteousness that bring about your will. But all that I've lived of pleasing myself, we've planted evil. So may we be forgiven. This dawn, we believe we will surely receive help. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. So God gives us today, and he He asks, do you want to plant blessings or do you want to plant curses? If we look towards the world or if we please ourselves, that's all sin. Only acting out God's will, that is eternal. That's 1 John chapter 2, verse 17. So am I evil or am I righteous? How am I living today? So let's find Psalms chapter 37 from verse 21. Let's see how we live. Psalms chapter 37 from verse 21. Am I evil? Am I planting disasters and curses and going to hell? So he says here, the wicked borrows and does not pay back. It's not just money, but someone who doesn't share God's love. That's all wicked. But the righteous is gracious and gives. So how is it that the evil doesn't repay God's love, doesn't give to others? Well, the righteous is gracious. The righteous, someone who does false step repentance and has, has been forgiven. It's, we we um, relay God's grace to others, how the Lord is with us. So how have you lived? Have you lived as righteous or evil? If you didn't have genuine love for others, then you lived as evil, and so you keep planting disasters, and then you ask for blessings. Who have you genuinely loved? Who have you loved your neighbor as yourself? So if they've received that love, how can they not come to church? So how much am I lying? I keep planting things to be punished, and then I'm mistaken to thinking that I've I've uh, done things to receive blessings. Each day passes. If you don't plant blessings, then you're planting evil. You say that you haven't planted anything, you've planted evil. So please, let's end the things to receive punishment. So the righteous, it's only in Christ. Otherwise, no matter how much you try to receive self-discipline, you're evil. You, to be righteous, you have to be in Christ. You have to have your sins forgiven. So what is it that I've done? The person, if I have love, then the person next to me, then you end up um, being gracious towards them. If you can't evangelize, it's not being trained in evangelism. That's a fake. You know, if you have to put apples on a tree, that's a fake. Those those apples have to be to come out naturally. Otherwise, you're evil. That's John chapter 15, verse 16. Why is it that God makes that fig tree wither even though it's not seasoned? Because it's fake. What God wants, there is no season. You have to always have these fruits of love. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. But, but who is it that likes you? Who says that they like you? So that's not if there's no if there's no one that likes you, then you're you're a beast. And every day you're planting disasters. So it's you and your children that receive loss. So we can't go that way again. Even if I'm in the 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 pit, we have to be raised up by God. So verse twenty two, for those blessed by Him will inherit the land, but those cursed by Him will be cut off. So here, who are the ones that are blessed by him? 
Who does God give blessings to? To the righteous. To the righteous, he gives blessings, and to the evil, it's only disasters and curses, but you don't know what to be righteous is. Faith is to be righteous. If, you, if you're righteous, you have faith. But these pastors, these churches, they don't know the difference between righteous and evil. What about the evil? All they do is borrow, so they're, so they're giving harm to others. They hinder others. Who are these people? Those people that always want to boast of their name, that always seek their own profit. These beasts, they're the evil. If you're not in Christ, there's never any um, dedication for others. You know, if you truly want to become president, you should give up all your wealth to do good works for the nation. That's how we should change our laws. You know, the president should just receive some apartment from the, from the, you know, and give up, just be given some small apartment and they have to give up all their wealth. If you're such a good person, then that's what you should be able to do. But to some robber, you give them even more. And if they don't want to do it, then they're a fake patriot. So to borrow and not pay back is someone who's always harming others. This word, starting from me, where are we? So instead of talking about others, starting from me, so who is it that you're going to harm, that you're going to give loss to? Who are you going to torment? What is grace? It's the Lord. Luke chapter 1, verse 28. The Lord is grace. Who does the Lord give loss to? Everywhere he goes, he gives benefit. Am I giving other people's harm or am I giving them profit? If you're harming them, then you're evil. If you're benefiting them, then you're righteous. So why is my life like this? Because you just go around harming others. And then you, what? You expect to do well? It's so sad. Verse 23, the steps of a man are established by Jehovah, and he delights in his way. So us coming and going, it's God who does it all. So why does he leave you to go to evil? If you hate to keep God in your heart, he leaves you to go to evil, and then he repays you according to what you've done. But if we entrust to him, so in verse 5 and 6, if we entrust to him, he'll lead us to the good way. What is entrusting? It is faith. It's only the righteous who entrust. So even today, with your dirty thoughts, you live your life. That's planting evil already. That's There is no future there. So if you obey according to his word, then Jehovah has prepared everything. But you go the way of ruin. You go off somewhere else. You know, and then you say, why am I not doing well? The Lord's prepared everything. He's almighty. He's the providence. He's Jehovah's providence. That's Genesis chapter 22, verse 14. He's done everything. But why don't you receive? Because you're evil. You keep going off somewhere else. So if you, if you suffer like that, you'll be ruined. When he falls, he will not be hurled headlong. So we, as we live, we can't but sin. If you say you don't sin, that's a lie. Sin comes out immediately and, and we do fall. But it's not that you fall forever and you can't get back up. Because, but he holds our hand and gets us back up. A young child, you know, they may trip and fall. But if they're holding the, the mother's hand, yes, they're falling, but they'll just spin and get back up. So if you're holding your mother's hand, your nose isn't going to get smashed. That's the way God holds us. To, to whom? To the righteous. So this is the way we have to live, so that each day we plant blessings and later we'll all experience miraculous blessings and receive them. That's what faith is. But because you do it, you're completely ruined. Whatever you do it, you'll be ruined. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. I, sing this, I say this to you so much. In our country, you know, they, you know, they keep doing things by their strength. God's word of truth is the same everywhere in the world, whichever country. Verse 25. I've been young and now I am old. So even when you look at your whole lifetime, 
I have, I have not seen the righteous forsaken. So other than forced step repentance, there is no one righteous. It's when you continue to do forced step repentance, that righteous is not forsaken. All their descendants, you don't see them begging for bread. So if we become righteous, then Korea will live. But, but you don't do this. If you go to a Christian bookstore, You see all these sermons where they're boasting of their name. That's all by demons. All these bo books, they're all demons that are boasting of their name. If you boast of your name, that's Satan. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 14. Um, Pro Proverbs chapter 27, verse 2. So they, they show how they, wrong they are because they all say, now you have to repent. So then they should be ashamed to get rid of all that. So if you've come to repentance, how do you repent? But they won't talk about something that, that is... That is so important. So they're evil because they have eight demons. That's why they're like that. So I've been young and now, am I, uh, now I am old. My whole life I've not seen the righteous forsaken or his descendants begging bread. So all he's seen is that the righteous receive blessings. So going this way, that is faith. Even if we've lived wrongly all this time, let's now go this way. Who is it that's lived properly? Even now, if we repent, within one or two hours, we'll sin again. So we, let's live by continuously repenting. Let's do according to the word. So if you're not doing well, it's because, you know, if someone comes to borrow money from you, do you like it? No. You say, oh, I didn't go to borrow money. It's not just money. If you're harming others, that's borrowing. If you spit anywhere on the street, if you throw you know, your trash anywhere on the street, you're always harming others. Benefiting, benefiting others means that you help them. But the evil, they only help when it's beneficial to them. So that's evil. True help's not like that. When did Jesus expect something back when he helped us? So let's see how I live today. Have a look. Have a good look. If you repent, your actions change. God changes them. Our whole life where we've lived evilly and planted, planted evil things. Don't be mistaken. If you've truly helped others, you see, is there someone that likes you? Don't become someone who they're afraid that you'll come. Even the children, they hate their parents coming. There's something wrong. If the parents are afraid of their children coming, there's something wrong there too. How can you do well to others when you're even afraid of that? If I keep If I keep ruining my parents' things, your children will do exactly the same because you have to reap what you sow. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. So it's for you to repent of that and become a man. So before you talk about your children, it's for me to repent first and, and to release them so that they can receive blessings and do well. If you have your sins tied up and then you expect your children to do well, you see, you know, these, these professors coming out on TV and... So yesterday, at the bathhouse, someone was saying, I think he's looked at the TV and read the newspapers a lot, but he was saying, so un unless the teachers of Korea are right first, our country can't do well. These university professors, they, you know, do you know how much they sexually abuse their, their students? He knew all these things that I didn't know. He said, from, you know, from the universities all the way down, To, to elementary school, they're, they're so rotten. You know, our country, it's so strange. So what is it that we should be doing then? Even though the world's like this or that, God's promise to us is always one, uh, to be righteous, to be happy and at peace. It's God that gives peace. It's only the faith that God gives to the righteous that is peace. So let's go this way where our children receive blessings. So verse 26, all day long he is gracious and lends, and his, de and his descendants are a blessing. So this is the way we should live. 
Oh, I've never lent anything. If you don't give benefit to others, you're someone who borrows and who gives harm. So someone with faith, they give profit to others. But even with your spouse, you have to start by giving profit to your family. How is it that your husband or wife hates, hates you? How can you, you know, if you're evil and you haven't even given that, Benefit. How can, if the parents hate the children, the children hate the parents, it's because they're not benefiting each other. So that's what you have to first do. That's Galatians chapter 6, uh, seven, six verse 9 to 10. So it's so starting with your the believers, your family. So if even your family hates you, then you're the worst of evil. So whatever you do, do it so that you're giving them benefit. So what, who are the righteous, who are the evil? Giving benefit is the righteous. If you're harming, then you're evil. So what is evil? Proverbs chapter 13, verse 21. Well, disasters will come to you, and even your children won't do well. So am I giving benefit or am I giving loss? You know, as you're giving benefit, you can be misunderstood. For example, you know, you, sh you should lock the door, but you didn't, or you didn't clear something away. Well, as long as I'm pure in front of God, then even if you're misunderstood, that's okay. But otherwise, if everywhere you go, you leave a mess, who are you harming? And then you curse other people's things. Don't become someone who borrows, but become someone who who gives grace. And this can only be by the righteous. That's the Father's promise. It's only the righteous. Well, it's only by four-step repentance that you become righteous. So, uh, was it in Japan? I heard it from Deacon Hong. When, when he went to a Japanese department store, they were selling something, and they said, this is yesterday's, don't buy it. That's the owner saying this. What was it? Fruit. You know, fruit, yesterday's or today's, there's not much difference. But at the department store, you know, we were, we were, we were, we went to the department store to buy something. And they said, oh, don't buy this, this is yesterday's. I thought it was some stranger, but it was the owner. So the Japanese, they seem good because they say that. Their inside isn't good, but that's what they do. If it was us, you know, the difference between yesterday's or today's, there's not much difference. So if it was me, I just want to sell it. I don't know about you. We say that we believe, but what are we better than these unbelievers who are evil? And that's why these Korean missionaries, they go to Japan. They call themselves missionaries, but they can't evangelize to anyone because their actions are worse. You can only evangelize if you're better. But fruit, today's and yesterday's, what's the difference? You know, if you leave them, they'll ripen better. That's, that's our logic. But these people, they're like, no, this is yesterday's, don't buy it. So we went there, it was close to 12 o'clock when we went. And they're like, this was yesterday's. And they're like, don't buy it, even though it was fruit. That's the way they live. So then let's compare that to me. You know, you compare yourself to that person. That person isn't. A believer they're evil and yet they do that and yet i call myself righteous what am i like so god has prepared our blessings why can't i receive because of this because of this verse 38 uh verse 37 depart 27, depart from evil and do good, so you will abide forever. So if you want your children to do well, verse 26, all day long he is gracious and lends. So he doesn't give harm to others, but shares. That's why his descendants are blessed. Depart from evil and do good. So we say this with our words, but what we have to do is repent. 
If we do foster repentance properly, and if our actions change where we say, this is yesterday's fruit, you know, don't buy this. If we did this, then we'd be slapped on the cheek. You know, the father would slap their son and say, all you have to do is sell it. But it's better to be slapped on the cheek and go to heaven and receive blessings rather than to sell one piece of fruit and go to hell. So this is Japan, which is close to us. They don't even believe in Jesus. Yet we say we believe in what's Korea like. You know, if you had a heart like that, you wouldn't divide into denominations. It's so sad. You know, I went there and I learned so much this time. You know, how surprising that that's how they run their business. Oh, this is yesterday's, don't buy it. They had a lot of fruit. As righteous, let's do good today. So for, the, for Jehovah loves justice and does not forsake his godly ones. So to be a saint, we have to be righteous. What, just by going to church, just by being a pastor and elder, you're a saint? No. If you give harm to others, then you're evil. So if you're evil, you and your children will be punished. So how have you lived? And so what do I say? So starting with your spouse, don't look at others, look at your spouse. What are you doing to your spouse? What are you doing with your family? You're just living, even though it's filthy, then you're evil. Your children can't receive blessings. You will receive disasters. You have to truly like them. It doesn't matter what, what they're like to you. You have to genuinely like and help them. So let's live rightly. Jehovah loves justice and does not forsake his godly ones. They are preserved forever, but the descendants of the wicked will be cut off. So it will be over for them. How do we want to live? So there's all these things, but there's only two ways. It's the way of the evil, the way of the righteous. At this dawn, let's receive help. Let's receive help as righteous. So let's not go the way where we and our children are cut off, but where we and our children, a thousand generations will do well, where we are gracious and we lend to others, share with others. How is it that if how is it that you live for the year that you can't evangelize to anyone, let alone your spouse? How can that be a saint? You're just a crazy person going back and forth to church. It's a dog pig coming. That's not a saint. And then what excuse do you have? God wants to give you all blessings. It's you that's not receiving. So, so who's done it? It's me that's the problem. So who likes you? I'm not boasting of myself. When I go to a restaurant with the deacons, it's not that I love to get a free handout. Why is it they keep wanting me to come? Because wherever I go, I want them to do well. And I tell them, this is what you should do to do well. Because I have genuine love, that's why they want me to come. Otherwise, why would they be waiting for me? Let's do well. God, he gives us today for us to plant blessings. You say, oh, I have nowhere to go. You know, when I look at the saints, the difference between the saints and the fakes, the saints do things to help. Someone who just goes and sits at someone's house, they're evil. All they do is hinder. If there's something to help on the street, then help and then go. That's a saint. But you just stop people from working, you just sit there and and you you're you're being a demon. And so they're they, they're afraid that you'll come again and they, they find find it, uh, you know, annoying. Just give benefit and go, leave. But you just sit there. You sit there um, hindering and you say, oh, believing in Jesus is so good. Why are your actions like that then? So, of course, they're going to find you annoying. There are a lot of fakes like that in our church. You know, if you help others, that's, you know, you live like a beggar, you're an enemy with your spouse, and then you hinder others. You know, we have to give benefit to others. Grace is where the Lord is with me. The Lord, he gives. 
benefit to everyone. So today we'll receive the best things. We have to receive help. Let's be forgiven so that we're righteous. Then you'll become a blessed man who who is gracious. You and your children will be blessed. You don't give harm to others. From today, let's have a new start. Let's all pray. Lord, all this time we've been so dirty, but still you forgive us. And Father, you still give us blessings. Now, we don't need words. How can you express grace with words? Help us to give benefit to others. If there's something to wash, to wash it. If we don't, if we don't know how to wash, let's not be foolish and break their dishes. But to say, oh, I don't know how to do this. You know what? I'll just sweep your yard instead. Or I'll do something else. Or if there's nothing to do, to just say have a good day and to just pass by. If there's something to help, to help. To whoever it is, to be able to be gracious to them. To not go to the house and be hindering. But if there is something to help, to help rightly and, and then pass by. But then to do something small and then to say believe in Jesus, to not do those things. But if we plant good, then it's the Father who will do it. You know, if there's someone who plants a seed, there's someone who waters it, but it's the Father who makes it grow. So let's live rightly. Who is it that I'm harming? Who is it that I'm tormenting? Help us to be released from that first. In Jesus' name, we, we thank you and bless. Amen.